All right, today we have a great question from YouTube. And by the way, if you want your question answered, ask it below because that's where I get a lot of these from. But this question I really like. I'm gonna answer it kind of briefly, but I do really like it. Uh, the question is, uh, hey Todd, can you talk about your philosophy on learning? I think a lot of us would like to know the process of how you got great at poker, investing, soccer, game, etc. cetera. Uh, no, this is great, and thank you for calling me great at all those things. Um, I, I like to think I'm decent at them, but uh, I, I appreciate the, the vote of confidence. Um, in any case, learning, right? Learning is maybe the thing that I'm, that I'm proudest of. Like, if, if I were to tell you like, what I'm good at in life, I would say I'm good at learning and I'm good at winning. Those are like my skills at life. Game, actually, ironically, was one of the things I was worst at. Right? It's, it's kind of ironic that this is what I'm teaching when it was something I was so bad at, but the way I got good at it is because of being good at learning and winning. Um, and game is something where you can teach yourself a lot, and game is something where there definitely is a winning and losing element to it, um, and, a, and a, a sort of a zero-sum as well as positive-sum aspect. Okay, so let's talk about how to learn how to get good at something. Um, the most important thing, and again, this is a huge topic, it's not something I address in one quick video, but the most important thing I would say if you want to get good at something is start with the fundamentals. Start with the basics and don't be in a hurry. Accept taking a little bit longer at first to get good later. The other thing too is you have to really be passionate. If you wanna get really good at something, you have to be driven, you have to be passionate. I remember when I was playing poker, for example, um, when I was learning and getting really good at, po at poker, I would wake up, I would like play cards, I would order my meals into my, I was playing online at the time, I'd order my meals into my apartment so I didn't have to leave the table. I would play pretty much all day. I might or might not work out, maybe. Um, and then I'd go to bed and when I went to bed there would be like cards like flying through my head as I tossed and turned at night trying to put together the theories of what had happened and things like that. And then on top of that I was reading, on top of that I had coaches, etc. So it, it was not a passive effort getting good at these things. You have to be passionate, number one. But the other one is you have to focus on fundamentals. And actually I'm going to take a lesson from an area that I'm not particularly nearly as good at any, as, at any of these things, um, but I think it's a, a good kind of illustrative lesson. So another thing that I'm like okay at is playing pool. I'm not great by any means. There are probably a lot of people watching this video who can beat me at pool. Um, but um, just for example, um, when I had a, a residency program in Vegas and, and people would come through and we had a pool table, there was not a single person that came through at residency who had a positive record against me. Um, and some of them were actually better pool players than me, but I just knew how to win. Um, regardless, I'm decent. I'm decent. I'm by no means a professional. But one of my things I've always wanted to do is get really good high-level pool coaching. So when I was in, the, in Southeast Asia, I went to the Philippines and I specifically sought out a, a, a pool coach because um, the Filipino players are really, really good at pool, but also the, the economy is you know, low enough that I could afford one at the time. Um, and so I, I went to this shady, like really seedy place where there's these amazing players, including some of the top professionals in the world. And um, I, I sought the guy who was like the best coach there and I, I offered to pay him to coach me. And after negotiating a little bit and watching me play a little bit, he finally said, okay, I'll do it. Um, and the funny thing is what he taught me for like the first probably almost three days was only one thing. He taught me to get down over the ball, line up a completely straight long shot, and to shoot it with as little movement of my entire body as possible, and just get super, super consistent shooting the long shot. And the one thing that like, was, he was very, very like, adamant about was that like, my pool cue be exactly level, which doesn't even matter for a long shot specifically. right? And what I wanted to learn was like how to do like spin and different shots and things like that. But he's like, nope, long shot, long shot, long shot, long shot, pool cue level, exactly same motion, like our arm like a pendulum where like no motion outside of like the, the lower arm basically. Um, and so I did this for days. And then funny enough, once I had learned that, he taught me in five minutes how to do spin, which is this thing that like I thought was so impossible and so incredible and so hard. Um, basically there's, there's a little kind of almost like a trick you can do um, that basically if you have a really consistent, really level, really good stroke, you can do this thing to, to shoot spin and not miss the ball. Like to shoot side spin, like top and bottom spin is a different thing. I already knew how to do that. But to shoot side spin and not miss the pocket was like something I had never figured out. And he taught me that part in five minutes. But did he really teach it to me in five minutes? Or was it three days of getting the fundamentals down so that he could teach me that in five minutes? In fact, it was because had the pool cue not been level, the up and down motion would have made that trick that he taught me to do spin absolutely not work. 
All right, so the funny thing is once I had the fundamentals, the advanced thing that I thought was out of reach was actually really, really easy, right? But the fundamentals were really, really hard. And it's the same thing in most things you're gonna do, right? If you don't have a solid fundamental base, the advanced stuff doesn't really work, the advanced stuff falls apart. And even if you can do the advanced stuff, it can be wildly inconsistent, it's not really gonna be very useful to you, all right? So how do you apply this in, in say, other areas? Okay, um, let's do, we'll, we'll talk about like investing in poker real fast and then we'll get to game. So in investing, there's all kinds of, of crazy, crazy strategies out there for investing, right? And some of them are good, some of them are bad. Far more of them are bad than you'd think. Most people who are touting investing strategies, most people who are giving investing advice are either, um, they don't know what they're talking about, um, they make more money giving advice than they've ever made trading or investing, or they have something that, that worked for a short period of time and, and will stop working soon, or they just got lucky over a period of time, right? There are some that are fundamentally good. Um, and what you wanna do in terms of investing is understand that, first of all, you can have a winning investing strategy by not being smart at all. If you were to just like do the most average thing and invest in the market, you'd make some money, right? And so you have something that works. So instead of trying to come up with something crazy and completely different from that, take the thing that works and build on it and try and tweak it and make it a little better and tweak it and make it a little better and tweak it and make it a little better. And eventually, eventually as you get better and better at that, you're gonna find more exotic, more exotic strategies make sense and other things make sense you wanna add on to it. But you keep that fundamental base. Um, and there's a couple really good things about that, especially in investing. One is that you're never doing things that are massively stupid and losing a lot of money. Because a lot of people get into investing and they do what they call blow up the account, meaning they lose everything. Right? You want to really, really avoid that. You want to avoid making those big mistakes in your learning because that investing somewhere you can learn, or you can lose as you learn. Um, but also you want to have a fundamental basis and understanding for every single thing you do. A lot of people will take the advice of a guru without understanding it and try like the, like, the flying backflip technique before they've learned to walk. All right, so that, that's another area there. Um, in poker, for example, um, especially in, in Limit Hold'em, which was the game that I um, was very, very good at and played professionally for years, um, the starting place is getting your pre-flop strategy right, making sure that you're playing the right cards before the flop. Once you're coming in with you know, the right hands and having a mathematical advantage throughout the rest of the hand, but also in knowing that and learning that, it teaches you how to start reading hands and figuring things out throughout the entire rest of the hand. So, but it all starts with the fundamentals and it starts with a fundamental that's fairly easily learnable and fairly easily figurable out. But if you start with the later stuff without learning that, um, you're gonna have a lot of problems and a lot of holes in your game. You're gonna be very exploitable. And I actually met a lot of guys who were more talented at poker than I was, but they were exploitable because they didn't have their fundamentals down. All right, so in game, what are the fundamentals? Um, in game, the fundamentals are um, the ability to walk up to a girl and just keep a conversation going, right? Focus on that before you focus on doing some crazy, like, I gave her a neg and I, I did a back turn and I, like, you know, I, I used this crazy, like, seduction line on her, right? The basics of having a good conversation, um, the basics of knowing who you are and how you want to convey yourself, these are, are basic elements. These are the fundamentals. You should learn to game with those before you learn to game with gimmicks, right? And then, speaking of fundamentals, when you start incorporating lines, instead of trying to come up with crazy lines that nobody's ever said before, borrow from what's worked before. Take some canned lines, take some things that people have done before, test them, experiment with them, see what works, learn the proper use of them, and then once you've imitated, you can learn to innovate. So it's a step-by-step -step iterative process, right? From the very basic ideas, basic concepts, each step you're trying to make it as easy as you can, and each step you're trying to have some success along the way, um, so that one, you stay encouraged and it stays fun for you, but also so you get really good, honest feedback of where you're making improvement and where you're not. Whereas if you're, you're trying crazy things and failing all the time, it's very hard to tell what you're doing well and what you're not, okay? So this is just the start, obviously, um, learning things, winning things, like there's a whole lot to it, but one of the biggest things I think people miss is one, you have to be passionate, you have to be willing to put in the work, but two, really, really start with the fundamentals and be willing to spend more time on the fundamentals than you think is necessary. The fundamentals are not sexy, they're not glamorous, they're not the most fun things to do, but they are the thing that's gonna give you the foundation so that all those more advanced things you wanna do later, you actually can do, instead of hitting like, like basically a brick wall where your fundamentals aren't in place and the advanced skills are just not available to you at all. All right, so that's just step one in learning but is start with the fundamentals. Mm -hmm.